Hello my lovelies. So this is a very different video for me and it's not the sort of thing that I would usually share but loads of you seem to really enjoy my creating my junk journal video, how I make them and I just thought I would show you how I use it because loads of people have asked. So I thought I would do a junk journal with me video. I'm journaling in the journal you can see on the screen at the moment and I only started it last week so it's still pretty empty but I'm really enjoying using it. It's a nice small size so I never feel overwhelmed and I find that just giving myself half an hour in the evenings to just kind of be creative and no pressure, just make something on the page that makes me happy and tells a little story it just seems to really help my mental health and I can't recommend it enough. I switch the telly off, I put my phone away and I just get creative. <laughs> Sometimes things turn out like really nicely and I'm just happy with it. Other times it's really simple like you can see on the blue page here. I've literally just written a gratitude log but it made me focus on the things that I am really happy about and grateful for. So at the moment I'm working front to back through my journal, lots of people don't do this, they just pick a page they like, but I don't know, I can't seem to get over the hurdle of doing that at the moment, so this is where we are. I don't have a fancy journal clip, I don't have fancy anything to be honest, I think a lot of these videos that you see, people have all the equipment and all the fancy stuff and I just want to show you that you don't need that. So I clip my journal open so that it doesn't close whilst I'm using it and then I'm just trying to find a starting point, something that I want to write about. So I'm having a look through these pictures, I printed them on free prints, so you get I think it's 40 free prints a month and I do a pic collage on the app just to make my photos smaller and you can get loads and loads of prints this way. Um, for free just using the app on your phone so I highly recommend that. Once I've picked the photos that I want to journal about, if I'm using photos that is, sometimes I use packaging or gift tags or newspaper clippings, whatever draws my attention on that day. Once I've picked my inspiration, I go through this random box that I have full of offcuts of paper, papers that I've bought, um, tags, postcards, all kinds of different bits and bobs that I've saved because I thought I would like to use them for my crafting and I pull out anything that I think could be useful. I do this because it just speeds things up once I get started if I've already got an idea of what I want to use rather than rooting through every single time to find the next bit if that makes sense. So as you can see I've just got this little stack of drawers with a couple of bits in some of them are from children's storybooks, recipe books, some things I've ordered online and yeah I've just kind of built up a bit of a collection. So I'm using these pictures of my children as a starting point. This is Harry and Meghan wearing their aprons in the kitchen and they absolutely love cooking with me. It's one of the things that we really enjoy doing together. So I cut down these pictures and I almost cut these two in half and then I thought they might look quite nice one on top of the other inside this I'm not even sure what this packaging was from but it's just a clear piece of plastic packaging and instead of waste it I thought I would save it and use it in my journal so I'm getting a piece of paper to go behind that and I never measure properly I'm sure it would look a lot better if I did but the whole point of me doing this is to have a bit of me time in the evenings to just switch off and not think and be creative so I don't measure properly, I do everything off eye really, really roughly and I actually like the way it turns out. I like the imperfections, I embrace them and I think, again, it's just really good for my mental health to see that the imperfections can be the things that make something look even more unique and beautiful. So I'm slipping those in here. I've not stuck anything down yet, I'm just sort of having a look and seeing what I think and I really like that in there. So I end up adding that as like an extra sort of small page in the middle. So I'm just kind of having a look and a play around with where I would like to put that. And then I'm having a look at my other bits to see what can go where. So I've set the plastic piece with the photos into one side and I'm just looking at all the other bits that I've got. This layout turned out to be really, really simple because that's just the kind of mood I was in. Sometimes I'll 
put loads of different patterns and papers and things down on the page and other times I keep it really simple. So I found this page from a nursery rhyme book and I really liked that it was like a mother and a child by the stove. It just made me think of me and my children and so I ripped it because I quite like the look of the torn edge instead of straight with scissors. Um, I ripped that just to sort of get a rough size and then I have a little look I think to see which page I want to put it on. So you can see I've just ripped the width to be approximately the right size and then I'll trim down the top and the bottom afterwards just to make sure it's exactly the right size and I've got the picture where I want it. I use Pritt stick to stick things in, nothing fancy. Um, I ordered these off Amazon and they were really, really cheap. I think there was like a massive box of maybe 20 of them and I'm sure it was about a fiver. So it doesn't have to cost a lot to do this kind of crafting. And I actually think the pages I prefer the most in my journal are the ones where I didn't spend anything. I haven't used fancy papers. I've used leftover envelopes, tags, plastic bags, things that I would have otherwise thrown away because... I don't know, it's just nice to repurpose something and give it a new lease of life and make it look beautiful. So now I am looking for some tape to stick my extra page in and I just have this washi tape here. I've only got two rolls of washi tape, so you'll see this one a lot throughout my journal if I do more videos like this. Um, this is the wider one I have, so it just seemed better to stick that page in the middle and just be a little bit more secure. So I roughly ripped a piece of tape, tape, <laughs> a piece of tape, the size that I wanted. It is longer than the pocket, but that's okay. And I kind of lined it up outside of my journal and then I'll stick it in once I'm happy that it's secure on the plastic. So you can see here, I'm just sticking it right down the middle. I'm trying to push it as hard as I can into the sort of spine of the book between those pages so that it feels like an extra page rather than feeling like something that I've stuck onto a page. If that makes any sense at all, this is the first time I've ever done a voiceover like this, so you will have to excuse the fact that I don't know the correct terms. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm just sharing something personal with you. Once I stuck it on one side, I decided to take the bits out of the envelope and stick them together and do a little bit of journeying. Journeying, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me today? Journaling on the card at the back. And I was just writing about how the children love to cook with me and when it's one of my happiest times and one of my favorite things to do with them. So I'm just jotting that down next to the pictures. I love the idea that one day in the future, the kids can look at these and we'll just see all these little notes of things and memories with them that made me happy, that who knows, they may not even remember themselves. And I just, I just love that idea. So I'm just jotting down a couple of sentences, nothing big. I always find if I pressure myself to write too much, it makes it stressful. So I tend to just do little bits here and there, enough to capture the memory and not too much to stress me out. So you can see here, there's not a lot on there at all, but it is enough to record what I want to record. So I slipped that back inside the extra page that I've made. Um, it was difficult because it was kind of sticky on the bottom. And then I put my washi tape on the back as well, just to secure that page in so that it's not going to fall out. I rubbed down really hard on it just to try and get it fixed on as tightly as I could. And then where the white sticker was on the back of that plastic wallet, I just stuck a prettier sticker, which was silly. I should have done this later because I do end up adding something else in there as well. But, you know, it's fine. You've just got to go with the process, haven't you? I then decided to take some of these old recipe sheets and just cut out a few bits that I thought might look nice on the blue page. I'm sorry if you can hear my children there in the background, but I'm trying to do this voiceover whilst my nephew is upstairs napping because he's with us today and my children are just having half an hour's calm TV time, hopefully, so that we can keep the noise down while he naps. <laughs> 
So I've cut out two long strips and then I've ripped a piece of this blue paper that I really liked and I just thought it would go with the blue that's already on that page. I'm just going to stick that down with my Pritt stick, stick it all down with my Pritt stick and I just try and make sure I get right to the corners of the page. I don't know if you can tell or whether it looks like a table but I'm actually sat on my living room floor whilst I'm doing this and then I just give it a quick mop afterwards to get rid of any glue or anything. I don't know, I just like sitting on the floor <laughs> and it's where I feel comfortable and relaxed. You can also tell that this is in the evening because as the video goes on the light's going down and you can see the tripod shadow on the screen but hey that is just real life so i stuck those on that page and there is a little bit of blue space left that i could maybe should journal on but i haven't this far i also had one of these brown tags i love using these i think i use them every couple of pages i just find them really useful and I couldn't figure out where to put it on this page because I didn't want to cover too much of the beautiful illustration. So I used a paper clip to fasten that on and then I can take it off, see the whole picture and put it back on again to store my memories in there. I found these stickers too and some of them were foodie ones, not relevant to any of the food pictures on here, but who cares? So I decided to just dot a few of those around to add a little bit more detail, a little bit more interest to my page and just kind of tie it all together going through because now it's instead of just being one double page spread it's kind of turned into two double page spreads because of the plastic wallet so I just wanted to tie those together to show that they are a set and they all go together it's all the same journaling session and the same memories so I'm adding those there I've put a little one on the tag as well and having a little flip through I don't actually do that much more now but I really didn't like the big white space in that envelope so I ended up opening the envelope pocket thing I think I've called it different every single time so far but you know what I mean um I ended up opening that up again and just put in another little piece of a recipe inside so it wasn't a stark white because I just I don't really have any stark white to my journal it just seems a bit like in your face to me and it, I'm just it's not my style not my cup of tea so I slotted that bit of a recipe in and sealed it back up again thankfully it sealed really nicely and then I was pretty much done I was thinking about putting something in this space but up until now I still haven't I could go back and do it if I decide that there's something that would fit there nicely and then I just wrote the nursery rhyme out again on the page because I had to cut that off and then on the tag I wrote a little bit about when I was a little girl and I knew all my nursery rhymes and Pops my granddad made up my own nursery rhyme for me because I knew all of them and he wanted something to surprise me with that I didn't know so I just thought that was a nice fitting memory of when I was a child to go with my memories of cooking with my children now and that was it I literally spent maybe half an hour if that and I just got down some memories that made me feel happy it always makes me feel calm doing this and I just think taking a little bit of time every day to be creative switch your brain off and just focus on positive things that make you happy it just, it does my mental health absolute wonders. So I can't recommend it enough. It doesn't matter how these look as well, because let's face it, your journal is private and it's for you. So I always find that helps for me to not feel the pressure because this is all just for me. As long as I'm happy and as long as it made me feel good to do it, then it's been a successful journaling session in my eyes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm not sure if I'm going to do more, so let me know if you want to see them. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.